Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please pray with me? Your glorious and heavenly Father, you are a glorious and wondrous God, awesome to save, and just a God that is full of grace and mercy and, and power. Father, we come to you knowing that at times we deny that your Son died for us. We deny your Son and his influence in our lives, and by virtue we deny you. Lead us, Father, to repent of our sins and look to you for our grace and mercy so that we may live more fully knowing and believing not only in what your Son has done for us, but being bold in our proclamation in our life, standing with him. And we pray this all in the name of your Son, Jesus. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Tonight it's about denial. It's about Peter, and it's about what happened to him. It's also about us. I invite you uh, to uh, open up a Bible, please, to our text in, in Mark chapter 14, beginning at verse 66. Uh, if you didn't bring one with you, we have Bibles that are in the back racks that are attached to the back of the queue in front of you for you to use. We want to, first of all, take a look at denial, what it's like. And in that, we want to look what Peter went through. So as you're turning in your Bible, let's set the stage a little bit here. Let's set the stage of Peter, along with the other 11 apostles, had gone to the Last Supper, the supper by which Jesus instituted Holy Communion. And in that event, Jesus said a couple of very strange things. First of all, one of them would deny him. He said also that they would all desert him. And also, one of them would betray him. Well, at that meal, they all vehemently denied the fact that they were going to do what exactly happened. <laughs> Judas went off and denied Jesus and betrayed him. When Jesus was arrested, they all ran off and deserted him, left him all by himself. And then there was peace. Now Peter hung back. He didn't run away pretty much like everybody else did, but he kind of hung back in the shadows for a while, and followed them, and followed where they took Jesus. They took Jesus to the house of Caiaphas, and there in the house of Caiaphas, Peter stood in the courtyard. And as we see in verse number 66, while Peter both was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him. You also were with that Nazarene Jesus, she said. Now, Peter has a choice to make at this moment in time. He can either say, well, of course, yes, I was. And I will stand wondrously and joyously with my Savior. Or... He would kick into flight mode. No, 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 not me. No, I wasn't with him. Wasn't me. Him over there? Uh-uh. Wasn't me. Nope, not me. And he walks away. He walks over to the entrance to the courtyard, hoping he's going to get away with all of this and hoping he's going to escape. But the girl follows him. The girl follows him. Not only does she follow him, she says to everybody else gathered around the gateway, this guy was with him. And again, Peter says, nope, not me. I didn't do it. I wasn't with him. Nope, not me. It's supposed to be somebody else. You must be confusing me with somebody else. And then somebody else said to Peter, yeah, you were with him. You know why I know you were with him? You're a Galilean. Well, uh, probably, just like there are many different dialects and many different accents here in the United States, Peter's accent probably gave him away. And then Peter vehemently began to call down curses upon himself. No, if it had ever be so severely, I'm not with him. Then the rooster crowed. Immediately, after the crow of the rooster, Peter recognized what he had done. 
That's what Peter went through in his denial. And it's the same thing what we go through. You see, each and every one of us has the opportunity that God places us in positions to where we can share our faith and demonstrate our faith in the presence of other people. Now, when that happens, and people look at us and say, wait a minute, you're a Christian? Now, generally, like Peter, we have a choice to make. Either we can say, yes, I am. Thank you very much for pointing that out. I am very joyous about knowing Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Would you like to know him too? Or, and this generally happens more than I care to admit, Jesus? Nah. I don't know him. Yeah, I know about him, but I really don't know him that much. I mean, that's, that's one way. There's another way. That you're with a group of friends. They want to go do something. And you know that what you, they want to go do is not in accordance with what you believe. And instead of saying, no, no, see, I don't believe in what you want to do. I, I, that's not for me. I don't want to go do that and walk away and leave. You know, peer pressure has an ugly way of making us do things that we really don't want to do because we don't want to stand out. We don't want to be different from everybody else. We want to blend in with everybody else and think, hey, we're one of them. And you go ahead and do it anyway. There's a couple of examples of how denial looks like in our lives. I don't want to get now to penitence. And what's it like? For Peter, penitence was once the rooster crow, and in the Gospel of Luke, Luke puts something in there that none, the other Gospels don't have. I affectionately call it the look. Now, as a parent, you know that look. You give that to your children every once in a while. That look of, really? You want to do what? And your child looks at your face, and they know exactly what you're thinking, because you're giving them the look. Peter vehemently denies Jesus. Jesus, he's not that far away. He hears this. And he turns and he looks right at Peter. And then the rooster comes. Peter took the look as more of I told you. I told you you were going to do this. You said, no, 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 I wasn't going to do that. Peter, I told you. And you can, un you can perceive how Peter understood the look of Jesus by going, I told you so. <coughs> For Peter, penitence looked and he went off and he wept bitterly. What does the wept bitterly sound like? You know, sounds like maybe something like this. Lord, Dad, come in. How did he know? How did he know I was going to do that? Oh, I feel like crap. I'm just a complete idiot. How can I do that? How can I deny Jesus? How can I do that to him? Penitence looks like with Peter. And for us, what is penitence like? Well, we're all going to respond differently. We're all going to respond in some way, shape, and form. When God looks at us and says, you've denied me, he gives us the look. You know that look. That look that creates perhaps shame, grief, sorrow, anguish, fear, 
all of the above. Why did I do that? Why did I do that sin? I know Jesus didn't want me to do that. What? Why? Why? Oh, so stupid. What does penitence look like for you? What does it look like for you to repent of your sins knowing that Jesus has given you <coughs> your work? What's it like? And finally, forgiveness. What it's like for Peter and us. Now I want to go back to the look. Because when we, re when we see the look of God, when Peter sees the look, saw the look of God, he responded it with penitence and sorrow and grief. And Peter perceived that look to be one of anguish and sorrow and sadness in the eyes of Jesus. Well, let me share with you another possible the way in which Jesus looked at Peter and the way Jesus looks at us. The look of... Yes, I knew you were going to do that. But I love you so much. I love you so much that I'm going through all of this for you. I love you so much that I am going to be beaten and again accused and spin upon and yelled at. I'm going to be handed over to Pilate, and Pilate's soldiers are going to whip me and beat me half to death, and I'm going to be bloodied and ripped up. Pilate's soldiers are going to string my arms up on a tree and nail my hands to a tree and nail my feet to it and cram a crown of thorns upon my forehead. I love you so much. I'm doing that for you. And I'm going to die for you so that your sins are gone and taken away. Yes, your sins even of denying me. Denying my refugees. What does that look, look like? What does forgiveness look like for us? It looks like the passion of Jesus Christ. And this is good news. This is great news. This is phenomenal news. Jesus endured all of that to save us and to give us a brand new life. A brand new life that looks at situations and when we're faced in situations where we have to make a choice, do I choose to live according to my faith or do I choose to follow the ways of the world and deny Jesus? He gives us a new life that says, no, I am not going to follow the ways of the world. I am not going to deny Jesus. I am going to stand proudly and boldly and profess the name of Jesus Christ and live it. That's what the new life is all about. To boldly profess and to live Jesus Christ as Lord. That Jesus Christ is my Savior. To boldly live Without fear, without worry, that's what forgiveness looks like. That's the passion of Jesus. And in His name, Amen. Peace of God, peace of all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.